There's a lot of mini PCs out there with the Ryzen 7 8745HS, which is really fast because not only does it have a fast CPU, but it also has a 780M, which allows you to play, uh, I guess, games better than the Steam Deck. Uh, just think about this as a better Steam Deck. It's like a newer, faster, but very similar as far as the specs go. So in your brain, that might put you right, you know, in a certain spot when it comes to performance in different games. So last year I looked at a product from a brand called Trigkey, and I want, I want to show you what we got right here. So this is Trigkey. They don't have a lot of products. And I think that's kind of a shame because whenever I get one of their products in, I'm like, oh, this is really good. Like it's well made, It's it works very well. And generally compared to a lot of the competition, it's usually as fast as, if not faster than everything else out there. And it does a really good job when it comes to sound dissipation and everything else. So I feel like they do put a lot of thought into their stuff. I wish they did make more stuff because then I could look at it, but this is what we got. And we're gonna go through the Trig Key R8, starting with the specs. Then I'm going to play some indie games on there because I use this as a platform to recommend some cool indie games that get sent over or that I want to show you. And then we're gonna do all the benchmarks. I use OEM keys for a few different reasons. This is the price you're going to pay for Windows 11 Pro. If you get a retail key, let's check those prices on whokeys.com. $30, you know, we can do better. Put in TS25, click apply. There we go, 2322. You got Windows 11 Pro and Home. Same with Windows 10 Pro and Home. We now have LTSC versions. This version of Windows 10 will give you security updates until 2032. And it doesn't come with any bloat or AI nonsense, no copilot, no recall. The same for Windows 11. The LTSC SC editions are volume licenses usually acquired in the same way you would get an OEM key and I made a video on where these keys come from I'll link that below so if you have any qualms about using a volume license key then just grab one of the regular keys I don't they work and so I'm gonna grab one and we have two flavors of office if you're sick of paying that monthly subscription well you can get yourself an offline version of office 2019 or office 2016 let's go ahead and check out with our copy of Windows 11 Pro I just put in my card info. There we go. Click on view keys and codes. Once you get to the user center, click on get the key. You'll see your key right here in the middle. Go ahead and highlight that, copy that, press start, and then type activate. You'll see activation settings. Go ahead and click on that. And then right here, it says not active. Just click on change product key. Place in our product key and then click on activate. Hey, look at that, active. Head over to whokeys.com. Thanks to them for sponsoring. And now on to our regularly scheduled program. The Trinket Key R8 features a Ryzen 7 8745HS. That's an eight core, it's got 16 threads and it's 4.9 on the turbo. Now, last generation, we saw some stuff with just as many cores, if not more cores. And sometimes they would turbo to like 5.1 or 5.2. I'm finding this to be about the equivalent of last gen stuff that would turbo to 5.1, 5.2, maybe 5.3-ish range. So it uses a little bit less power and it can get a little bit faster when you just compare frequency to frequency, generation over generation, if that makes any sense. The graphic card, and this is kind of the, the biggest deal when it comes to these little systems, it's got the Radeon 780M, and that is a ridiculously fast integrated GPU. Uh, the maximum frequency on that is 2600 megahertz. It comes with one crucial M.2 pre-installed, it's PCI Express Gen 4 by 4 and we have two slots. I'll show you that when we take the back off. We got 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory. They threw some crucial in here. It's 5600 megahertz. When it comes to connectivity, you got Wi-Fi 6, you also have Bluetooth 5.2, and 2.5 gigabit Ethernet on the back. It's the real tech. I'll show you that in just a second as well. Let's go through all the ports. On the front, we've got a clear CMOS button, and we have USB 3.2, 10 gigabits per second. Moving on over, we've got USB-C. That's also USB 3.2, 10 gigabits per second. We've got a 3.5 inch audio jack on the front. That's headphone and microphone. And then we have a power button. Flipping it around to the back, you can see we've got the 2.5 gigabit ethernet port. Beside that, we have USB 3.2, again, that's 10 gigabits per second. Below that is USB 2.0, 480 megabits per second. Then we've got some room for displays. We've got HDMI 2.1, and that'll support 4K at 120 hertz. We have DisplayPort 1.4, that'll support 4K at 144 hertz. And then we also have USB 4, that's 40 gigabits per second. This is gonna be handy if you want to run like maybe a dock or something, something with a, an external GPU in it, you can use that. Also, this will double uh, for DisplayPort and you can use that as a third monitor. 3.5 millimeter audio jack beside that and then our DC input. Then we have our Radeon 780M. It's got four gigabytes dedicated video memory, it's DDR5, and it'll also share some of the system memory if it needs it. Now I wanna show you the network adapter. It's the Realtek RTL8125 2.5 gigabit ethernet adapter. And then we also have the Wi-Fi 6 adapter from Intel AX200. Now you take off the bottom, you just remove four screws. It's really easy, it pops right off. And then we have a metal plate on there with the fan attached to that. Now the fan's gonna blow down on your RAM and some of your components. 
And then on the other side, that's a giant heat sink that's going to cover up both your M.2 slot. And I said two, yes. So you look at this, we got two PCI Express Gen 4 by 4 M.2 slots. One of them's populated, the other one goes right on top of where the Wi-Fi is. So we have another slot there. I guess you could pull that Wi-Fi out if you wanted to and put something else in there, it's up to you. But you can mount two hard drives in this, one's already included. So I'm really impressed with the cooling system on this because just while using this while playing games and everything else, I don't hear it. And you know, when you go from generally, generally when you're playing games or doing benchmarking and you do stuff and then you stop with a lot of the systems you'll hear all the fans doing stuff, doing stuff and all of a sudden you'll hear that. With this one, it's so low that I barely hear any differentiation between full load and just chilling, just idle. So it's the, one of the least annoying mini PCs I've ever listened to because a lot of them ramp up and down depending on what you're doing just to make sure that all the core components stay cool. So I don't know how they were able to keep this thing cool and also keep the volume down like this, but good job, Trig Key. The other thing I wanna mention, I don't usually mention price in these. But this is 489 right now. And uh, you know, the other system that I looked at just recently is about $150 or more, you know, like when you compare the prices and it's got almost the same specs, like almost all the way down the line, except it has Oculink. So when it comes to this kind of stuff, USB 4 is gonna be close to Oculink. Oculink is just plugging straight into the, the PCI Express bus. So Oculink is gonna give you the lowest latency. Most people won't tell much of a difference, but yes, there is a difference between Oculink and USB 4. It's very similar, but this one, you'll be able to plug up to a GPU dock or something using USB 4. Whereas with you know the other one that's a little more expensive, you can get there with Oculink. Is that a big deal? Is it worth hundreds of extra dollars? Probably not. Just get a system with a bigger GPU if you're gonna be spending that much in my opinion. But this one's so fast that it's kind of uh, ridiculous. Now is the part of the show where I like to talk about some indie games that I'm playing right now. We'll show you something that was created in Unity and also something that was created in Unreal and goof off a little bit. See how they play on a system like this. And then we're gonna do some game benchmarks and productivity benchmarks and uh, that should do it, yeah. So this is the start of an indie game. Like, this is it. This is the start screen. There's this, I can start moving right now. This is Antro. And I guess if I could try to say this more correctly, people in Barcelona, please correct me. Antro? I don't know. I had a little bit of Spanish, but they speak Catalan there, don't they? Anyway, this is an indie game out of Barcelona. It's you, you gotta deliver a package, and your enemy is the system. Your ally is the music, as they said. But it's a beautiful game, and it's made in Unity, so I wanted to take a look and see how games in Unity run. This runs great on my Steam Deck, and since this is essentially very similar to the Steam Deck, but a little bit more powerful, I figured this would be a good place to, uh, to check this out. And it's running, it's pegged at 60, so let's go ahead and see if we can bring it up a little bit. All right, we're running at 1080 quality. Let's put it on high. I'm not gonna try to turn this off. It's just, it's running at 60. So it runs really well. I think it looks great. It runs better than it does on my Steam Deck a little bit. I kept playing this game on my Steam Deck mainly because the atmosphere. I mean, look at this thing. It looks awesome. You know this artist, Beksinski? This artwork's awesome. And you know, a team sat down and they said, you know what, what if we make that artwork into a game? And this is what we got. All right, we're just gonna do medium quality right here in view distance. I'll do that to medium as well. So without DLSS, oh, it does look a little bit sharper, but yeah, this is the game here. I'm not gonna go too much into it, but uh, indie Unreal Engine games, especially a game like this, totally fine running at 30 FPS, 35 FPS, somewhere in that range, because this is not like a super fast shooter or anything like that, Necrophosis. For the most part, we're gonna be exploring and uncovering secrets and doing cool stuff like that, being beckoned into strange areas like this. Check that out, it's really cool. Yeah, it does feel like we're in one of those paintings. What's up with you eyes, fool? Am I stuck in here now? I believe I am. Anyway, so this runs really well on the medium setting. Just wanted to show it off because I can. All right, let's put Cyberpunk through its paces. First thing I'll do here is just start it off on the medium setting. And I'm also gonna turn off motion blur because I hate it. But that's great for medium. Never drop below 38 FPS right there. And our average is 44.62. So let's go ahead and see how it runs on the low setting. 51.51 FPS, never drop below 44.67. And just look, it looks very good on low in my opinion, totally playable. So if you want smoother experience, play it this way. If you're okay with the, I guess a slightly slower experience, if you're more of a into the role playing in the world, then play it on medium. All right, so it looks like we're kind of splitting the difference here with the Steam Deck settings. I might play it on medium. I don't know, pretty good. 43.11 FPS, minimum of 37.45 on the Steam Deck settings. All right, let's take a look at Baldur's Gate 3. I'm playing this on the medium setting, and 
it's running really well. Check that out. 30s. You know, we're in the underdark right now, so it's not entirely crazy. You'll probably want to put this on low if you're running around in a city like Baldur's Gate or something. Here, the Shadow Curse land should be just fine playing just like this. I'm also running SMAA instead of the temporal anti-aliasing because I don't like all that smudging nonsense. We don't want that around here. I'm going to run around over here and then we'll take a look at the 1% lows. I'm not doing a really long benchmark, but we'll just get an idea for it. I think it's time to change the battery on my keyboard. Here's my mod list if you want to see. There's not really much in there that's going to change the FPS at all. I don't need this over here. And our 1% low was dropping just a little bit below uh, 30. So you'll feel a little bit of a hitch right there. You can go in and tune a few things and keep the medium look, if you know what I mean. Bring shadows down maybe a little bit. Change a few other things. Global illumination will be a big deal. You could probably get it up to 30 or 40 FPS looking very similar. So that's just beyond the scope of this, though. Now we're talking, look at this performance. 74.4 FPS, 1080p high here at Unigen Valley. Our minimum's 35.2. This is basically identical to most of the 7940HS based machines that I've tested. That's a more expensive CPU, generally faster with more cores, but it also has a 780M. Overall score here is 3111. Let's take a look at superposition running at 1080p on medium. This does CPU and GPU quite a bit. Average score 39.63. The minimum never drop below 30, 33.40. Our overall score is 5,298, so let me know what you got if you're playing along at home. All right, with Cinebench, our single core is looking good, 1741. Multi-core score is 15658. All right, let's have a look at Geekbench. I did OpenCL and the CPU GPU. Let's first off take a look at our single core, 2505, and multi-core is 12414. I'll scroll down and take a look at all these individual tests if you like. Stop if you need to see something in particular. Here's the OpenCL score, 30,477. I'll scroll down and you can see the individual tests right there. And we shall brave the hideous new interface of Premiere 2025 to see how editing works. This is running at 4K. You would never want to do this, but I'm going to bring it all the way up to full just to show you. Got everything running locally on the M.2, and you can just scrub around to your heart's content. So yeah, 4K works completely fine here. I'll do a bit of a transition, and we'll see how that looks. Make a long dissolve, and we'll see how the CPU handles this. All right, running at full 4K, which you would probably not want to do. And let's get a nice long dissolve here. That's great. That took forever to dissolve into Baldur's Gate 3, but yeah, that works just fine. All right, so yeah, at 4K editing, no problem. I would run this at one half because having 4K in a tiny window is goofy. All right, let's take a look at the heat. So I've been running the stress test here with Ada 64 for about 40 minutes now. And as you can see, the temperature sensor is not working with Ada 64 correctly. So we're using hardware info over here. The max that we hit during this entire time was 87.6. So we're well within spec. We're under TJ Maxx quite a bit. It is hot. This is a you know warm CPU if you're running it at 100% for this long. It did take a while to climb up to 87.6. And we've kind of plateaued at 86, 85 in this range. Let's go ahead and check the fan noise. It's a bit rough to do this because my room is not entirely quiet. This is just the room like sitting at my desk. All right, now let's put this about a foot away and see how much louder it gets. You know, compared to the background of the room, this was like hopping around between 45, 46.7. It's barely noticeable above the background sound in the room. I would call this one of the top few I've ever tested when it comes to just staying nice and quiet. The trade-off is it's a little bit warm, but I'm kind of okay with that. I prefer a silent machine. Crystal, Di Crystal Disk Info tells us a little bit more there with the firmware number. There's the model number. This one usually is around 5,000 megabytes per second. So let's give that a test and just see if it's... Uh, you know, running at full speed. There we go, 5,179 on the read, and then 4,728 on the right. Just to say effectively, I have a 5,000 on there, it's 5,000, yeah. All right, random 4K, a little bit lower than I'd like over here on the random 4K right, 78,426. I think it's still gonna feel pretty snappy while you're, you know, moving files and whatnot on your computer. As far as the temperatures go, let's take a look at the where is it? Smart temperatures right here. 56 during the, I guess, the worst part of the write. And it just idles right here in the 40s, 30s and 40s. So pretty good performance there. That's probably thanks to the fact that we have a thermal pad and that piece of metal on top with the little heat sink. So yeah, 
So there you see, you can use this to do just about anything. Um, this is kind of goofy how uh, good this is for the money, in my opinion. Now, prices may come and go, but I feel like they've priced this at a point where it's like kind of hard to argue with. The other thing is just, I mean, they, they don't release a lot of products, but when they do, something like this shows up, I'm like, okay, yes, that's legit. It's well made, well done. I mean, mainly just the how quiet it is while it's, while it's doing everything. So yeah, it's faster than most of the others with the same specs. It's faster than a lot of last gen stuff that's a little fancier and has more of a frequency advantage. It's less expensive than some of the similar stuff. And it's quieter, so. Full endorsement here for this Trig Key Key R8. Great mini PC. Don't forget while you're on the internet, got all this stuff over here, half price. All these mice, check that out. Um, some of this other stuff, oh yeah, I got some of these things just hanging around here. Head over to epicpants.com, half price with the coupon code Happy Hardware. That's secret for people who are watching. It doesn't show up anywhere. But once you like click on this, put it in your cart, and then type in Happy Hardware, this will be 20 bucks. And this thing, yes, it's wondrous. Get yourself one. All right, see you in the comments. The Trig Key, the Trig Key, blah, 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 the Trig Key Key R8.